the, 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 I was trying to do this last night. We did the football show to keep the camera on me, and then at the last second, the one guy, Austin, like said something, and it took the camera off him. So when I introduced the show at the beginning, it was his face instead of me talking. But anyways. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay. Welcome, NBA fans, to another episode of King's Court. This is our third episode. Mark it down three. I'm Andy. I'm your host today. With me, I have Brandon from Sports Kings. How you guys doing? Uh, I just want to let all you guys know and all you who are watching that NBA All-Star Weekend to me is literally like a holiday, and I'm just so excited that it's All-Star Weekend. And we share the same thought on that. I love the NBA All-Star Weekend. I think it's the best All-Star event in sports. Mm -hmm. Next, we have Damon, also from Sports Kings. What's going, going on, uh, fellas? Uh, happy Valentine's Day to you all. Got one Brooklyn stat for you. 0-9, top heavy hitters in the Central Division, Chicago, Detroit, and Indiana. Wow, oh, that, that conference makes me sad. And <laughs> our newcomer to Sports Kings is Desmond. Desmond, how you doing? I'm doing great. I want to thank everyone for having me. I'm excited to be a part of Sports Kings and get this started. And I also am very excited for the All-Star break. Yeah. Excellent. It should be a good time. Um, I'm really interested in seeing that first event tonight. Uh, so without further ado, the biggest topic in the NBA besides All-Star Weekend uh, lately has been the whole Mount Rushmore of sports things. Uh, you know, ESPN threw it up there. LeBron James commented how he was eventually going to be a top four player. I believe his Mount Rushmore was Bird, Magic, uh, who was his Mount Rushmore? Bird, Magic, um, Jordan, and Oscar Robinson. And he eventually feels like he'll be the fourth. I don't. He didn't really discuss who he was going to push out of that top four, but time will tell. So the idea here that I had was to, to kind of come up, or the idea we had was to come up with our own personal Mount Rushmore and don't kill us too much, guys, uh, when you see this, when you're, when you're looking at this video. This uh, Mount Rushmore is basically based on our personal preferences, so it's not going to be necessarily the top four best players of all time. That's not what we're trying to say here. We're just trying to give you the insight into to our minds. I think that's very important uh, as people viewing the show. If I was viewing the show, I would want to you know, kind of be in the mind of the madness here and, and see who these guys that I'm watching, you know, they prefer as basketball players. So let's start, and we'll go right to you first, Brandon. Who do you have on your Mount Rushmore of NBA players? First off, this is an awesome question. Uh, I think if you're an NBA fan in general, this is like a fantasy question. Um, so my list goes a little sideways in a way. Um, growing up in Salt Lake City, Utah, I got a chance to see John Stockton play. So he's one on my list. Uh, real quick, I love Magic Johnson because, what was he, 6'9"? Six, 6'9", nine? Six, nine point guard, could play every position, but at the end of the day, it's got to be John Stockton. Um, continuing on, uh, he's the all-time NBA leading scorer and had the best sky hook in the game. Uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That might be on some of you guys' list. It may not be. And this is where I feel like I went sideways on my list for Mount Rushmore is he's a personal favorite of mine despite all this controversy throughout the years. And I looked up to him, and he still is one of my favorite players till this day, is Allen Iverson. Don't know if any of you had that on your list. And last but not least is LeBron James because, like you said earlier, Andy, you know, I was pretty young too when LeBron first came to the league, and I've been watching him ever since. So those would be my top four for my Mount Rushmore. And I really like the Iverson one. I, you know, I, I think that what he's done for the NBA, especially with guys our age, I mean, I'm 30 years old, so when Iverson was in his heyday, I was, you know, in high school. I was uh, towards the, the late years of my, my teenage years. So yeah. I, I do appreciate that pick. And LeBron James, he thinks Iverson's the best player ever. So, uh, Damon, we'll kick right over to you. And who's on your Mount Rushmore, man? Uh, first off, you got to go with the best player in the game right now. Definitely LeBron James. I mean, we're talking about a guy that he is a complete stat sheet stuffer. One, two, mm -hmm. you know, like you guys said, this was a guy that, you know, I was watching him when he was with the Irish of uh, St. Vincent James. So, you know, the year before they came out with 2004 NBA Live, I had created this guy and put 
yeah. on the Cavaliers when they were wearing blue and, and, and black. So that's <laughs> the big fan I was of LeBron James, and I still am now. Nice. Um, the next guy, I definitely have to go with another stat sheet. You suffer. I'm going with Big O, Oscar Robertson. Um, he was at one point best in the game, and I don't think we're ever going to see a like and a Kareem Abdul Jabbar like they were back in the day. That's that's uh, a definite. And the next one, the guy I just brought up, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Yeah. Uh, another one of those guys I've looked up to, even though by the time I had got into basketball, he was all tired. So, being me, I felt like I had to mimic him on the court and try to skyhook. Obviously, it didn't work out as much, I, or I wouldn't be sitting with you guys. <laughs> and um, the next one, I got to go with Isaiah Thomas. Um, I know a lot of people have ill will towards him, but, you know, when he was on the court, all that, you know, you can throw that out the window because he was one of those guys. He was a ferocious, he was a fierce competitor. He, he put it out there night in and night out. And for me, as a, someone that wants to be a fierce uh, competitor, no matter what it is that I am, I definitely have to mimic his, his style of play, no doubt about it. And I like that. And so you and Brandon agreed on two two of the four. You both yeah. had Kareem and you both had LeBron. And I like where this thing's going. Desmond, our new guy, who's, who's your top four on the Mount Rushmore? I was I was really excited about this question because you made it personal, so there's no yep. right or wrong mm -hmm. answer, and I took a while with this. Uh, first things first, I'm going to go with LeBron James, obviously. Uh, when he was in high school, I was in middle school. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, watching ESPN, I, I've never saw a kid in high school on ESPN making the highlights he is, and then to see the player he's turned into today, he's definitely going to be on that Mount Rushmore in reality, but on mine, he's there already. Uh, secondly, my favorite player of, the all, of all time, uh, I watched his collegiate career, and then he's the one that transitioned me into the NBA, Dwayne Wade. Uh, hmm. Slasher at heart. He's uh, never really much of a jump shooter, but the, nice. fact that he could, the fact that he could score at will without that jump shot uh, at times. And then his NBA Finals performances, I mean, even now, he's not fully healthy, but he comes through in spurts. Uh, we saw in Game 6 I and mean, Game 5 last season in the NBA Finals and Game 7. So, yeah, uh, Dwayne Wade is definitely on my Mount Rushmore. And in my last two, I don't have Kareem, but I have another um, all-time center, and that's Hakeem Olajuwon. I just think nice. that this guy's uh, complete game, I think rebounds, nice. blocks, steals, assists. I knew we forgot somebody. And, it, <laughs> and in the fact that young forwards and LeBron himself go to Hakeem to improve their post game, I think he is definitely someone that would be on my Mount Rushmore. And then last but not least, uh, I thought about it long and hard. I felt like I'd be disrespectful. I didn't have this guy. Uh, Bill Russell, he's the ultimate winner and in, in the ultimate individual winner in team sports. And then just looking at his stats, we you know people always put down he won in an era where there was only like ten teams. Uh, he you know there wasn't really much competition. This guy had to win eleven rings going against Wilt at six nine, and he never had less than eighteen rebounds a season per, as an average. So this guy was truly one of the, and then last but not least, the finals MVP is named after him. So those are my four, LeBron, Wade, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Bill Russell. And Bill Russell was about that action, boss. Yes, he was. So <laughs> I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start right from the top because we're going to go right across the board, four for four with LeBron James here. He's on my Mount Rushmore, although he was actually my fourth pick. And I have, if I mean, my piece of paper here was scribbled 19 times. I had so many guys. Isaiah Thomas, Dave, Damon mentioned, he was one of my guys that I had in there at one point. Uh, maybe my favorite point guard of all time is Isaiah Thomas. I also had, uh, Desmond, you just mentioned, I believe, uh, Akeem Olajuwon. You had him on your Mount Rushmore. He was another guy I had in here that I scribbled off. I just couldn't really – for me, LeBron James, as I mentioned before the show, I graduated high school in 2002. LeBron James was drafted in 2003. And he was really the first athlete to me that got that super-duper high school coverage on ESPN. Now, it's happened since then. We've seen guys. I mean, we, we saw Andrew Wiggins getting this attention. We've seen other guys get this attention nowadays. But LeBron, to me, kind of broke that mold. Kobe, sure, but the cameras weren't there as much as they were with the Irish with LeBron James. So LeBron is on my Mount Rushmore. Um... Another guy I had on my Mount Rushmore is Larry Bird. For me as a kid, uh, Bird, when I really started watching basketball, Bird was on his way out. 
but to just see the things that guy could do back then. And honestly, not to make this a race thing, but I didn't really think as a little kid that white guys could play basketball, to be honest with you. I, I, uh, I, and Larry Bird was kind of the exception to that rule. He was, he was good. He could hang, and I was like, wow, this guy's good. You know, I, I just didn't see it. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal is my third. One of my favorite players of all time, uh, being near and dear to my heart when he was drafted to the Orlando Magic. I'm a big-time Magic fan. I always loved Shaq. Even when he was with the Lakers, I, he was just great. I mean, how often is it that, you know, you're considered the better of the two players for championship runs when you played alongside Kobe Bryant? It doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. Shaq fit that mold. And last but not least is probably my favorite player of all time. Nobody, uh, any of you guys mentioned, probably the lesser, the lesser of all of these players on Mount Rushmore that we've named, but Tracy T. Mac McGrady, my favorite guy of ah! all time. I feel like if he had never Andy been Mac. injured, he, I mean, he was one of the most lethal scorers the NBA had seen. I mean, you're talking a guy who had two scoring titles with Allen Iverson and Kobe Bryant in their prime, so... I feel yeah. like uh, T-Mac, and I watched him pull some of those Orlando Magic teams, dragged them kicking and screaming mm -hmm. to, the, to the first round of the playoffs. Uh, I'll let you guys uh, go Google those rosters. They were pretty horrible. Um, and, you know, for me, that, that kind of concludes my Mount Rushmore. Anybody have any thoughts on these picks? I, I think with personal ones, you just can't go wrong. Everyone has their, their mm -hmm. connection to these players. Uh, everyone has their sense of appreciation for what they brought to the game. So... Like Brandon said, I think this is a great question for basketball. I, I, it just, it really is. It gets people talking, but not only that, you just, you have to appreciate history. Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, there is no wrong answers. It's, it's kind of like, you know, where a teacher would say, there's no stupid questions. There, with this, there's no wrong answers. And I mean, that's what's great. And I think for our viewers who are watching this at home, it's great for them to kind of get into our heads and, and be able to see where we're coming from. Damon, Brandon, you guys have any thoughts on this? Um, the Tracy McGrady uh, pick, um, dude. Seriously, I, I can't believe <laughs> really my last ball. It's, that's why it's so, it's such a great decision because you, it's your personal list one and two. You're only delegated to only four picks, so you have all these guys that you love, but you can't you can't put them on the list. And the Tracy McGrady pick I thought was so great because. The first one that just the first reason is because the Houston uh, the Houston game, uh, back in two thousand five, what was thirteen uh, points, 13 13 points in like thirty seconds, seconds or something mm -hmm. like that? Like mm -hmm. like seriously, man. Against like, Bruce Bowen too in his prime. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. so it's, for me, that that I man, I don't need. I feel like right now I want to cross one of these guys off and put him on there, but <laughs> I can't do it. Um. And not to mention, he plays pitcher for the Sugar Land That that was a curveball. I think you know, for me, for me, it was easy just because I'm a Magic fan, and he, like I said, he's my favorite player of all time. So I think where a lot of people are probably that's where they stop with my list. People are like Tracy McGrady, really? But he was the first guy I had written down. I mean, that was my my mm -hmm. first no-brainer. Brandon, your final thoughts on this Mount Rushmore? First off, I applaud all of you on your picks and your facts and stats and all that good stuff. Um, I'm just going to go off what you guys were all saying. It's just really a fantasy question for every NBA fan out there. It's something that gets people talking, and it's just a phenomenal question. Even in other sports, you can ask the same question. But in the NBA, it's really special for all of us. It's special for me. And again, I love Tracy McGrady. I do. But that Allen Iverson pick, that's that hit my heart. That's I love Allen Iverson. That's yeah, I mean, I have to, the two picks that you guys mentioned. One, Larry Bird. Oh mm -hmm. man, I mean, the respect I have for this man, cold blooded, doesn't even describe the the ice <laughs> yep. waters that just ran through his veins. And then Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, I mean, a lot of people, he is goofy on this off the scenes. He is, you know, he's great on NBA on TNT, but he will, he should go down as the most physically dominant player of all time. I mean, no one yeah. could handle Shaq in the paint. And then the fact that he had skills to go with it as well, remarkable. Yep, ran the floor. So let's go right into our next topic, which is a pretty good one, and it's relevant to right now being that it, uh, has to, it pertains to the All-Star game. And this is Dwayne Wade has this, uh, I guess we're calling it a mysterious foot injury at this point because it's, uh, what is it? I had to write this down. They're calling it drop foot. 
mm -hmm. which is basically some sort of a, a nerve damage. The foot goes numb. He has trouble moving it. And ay ay ay, Dwayne Wade, who's uh, on Desmond's Mount Rushmore, and he just can't seem to stay healthy. If it's not one thing, it's another. Um, and one more quick fact is it's looking very unlikely that he's going to play. And Lance Stevenson was nominated in his place should Wade not be able to go, although Wade says that he feels optimistic about going in the All-Star game. So let's we'll go to you first, Desmond. And what? how do you feel about Lance Stevenson being the fill-in? Do you think that that was the right, cho right choice, first of all? And then part B to that question is, what's up with Dwayne Wade and his career moving forward? I think Lance Stevenson is one of the candidates that you'd go to if Dwayne Wade can't play. Obviously, he's had a pretty good season. He's producing very well for the NBA's, we could argue, the NBA's best team right now in the Indiana Pacers. Um, and he's just really upped his game. I mean, we could argue he's one of the top candidates for most improved player in the mm -hmm. NBA uh, for what he's done for Indiana. Uh, just however, I think there's one other guy in the Eastern Conference playing for a team that shouldn't be a playoff team right now that should have gotten that spot, and that's Kyle Lowry. Uh, Kyle Lowry is really putting in the work for the Toronto Raptors, 16 points per game, 7 assists, and he is just playing lights out, and he's being aggressive. And this is a guy that when the Knicks were in the talks of trading for him, everybody was like, no, he's not worth it, and then he started playing like he's worth it. So I think he's one of those guys that got snubbed. Uh, Joe Johnson made it over him, which was a big uproar. Uh, but you look at the stats from top to bottom. I think Kyle Lowry really deserved that spot. And then speaking about Dwayne Wade, uh, like we mentioned before, it's just his health. He's been a slasher for so long, and, and all of you guys who have been you know, into basketball for as long as you've known, watching Dwayne Wade, he's, he's very heavily into contact, bumping, getting those foul calls, going to the paint. He's never been the Kobe type where he's, he's a shot lie. blocker too. Right, and he's 6'4", which actually a lot of people think he's really 6'3". But uh, to do that, and then not only that, he's never really had that jumper that like a Kobe Bryant could rely on where he doesn't have to put his body at harm. But it's definitely taking a toll on the heat this season. LeBron has had to up his game, which is obviously no problem for LeBron James. Uh, but Dwayne Wade, I mean, the health is going to be a question. Obviously, the Heat really don't care if he's going to play in an All-Star game. I don't think if it, I don't think it's going to hurt Dwayne Wade's feelings or – or his psyche to not play in the All-Star game, they're thinking about championships. And if this foot injury is that bad, I want Dwayne Wade to sit out. And uh, Rich, quick before we kick it to Damon about his thoughts, I just want to say to Eric Bledsoe, I hope you're monitoring Dwayne Wade's situation very closely because I really feel like all these injuries Wade's sustained over the past few years is uh, – it's coming from that removed meniscus that back in 2002, and, and Bledsoe opted to do the same thing, and it's it's a shame because he's a very similar player, being explosive, mm -hmm. contact, not necessarily a reliable jump shooter, um, and I, I wish him the best. Damon, your thoughts on Wade and Lance Stevenson? Uh, well, first off, let me say I, I thought the Lance Stevenson pick was absolutely uh, was absolutely the right choice. Um, we talked. We talked about it last week. I felt he should be, you know, right now the defensive player of the year. Um, but that's another story for another day. Number two, uh, what what's going on with Dwayne Wade? It's not a problem if you're a Heat fan because you have LeBron James, because you have a Chris Bosh, and like Desmond said, they're here about. They're, they're not here to just make the playoffs. They're here to make the playoffs and win championships. So, however long Dwayne Wade's going to have to sit down. You know, if I'm a Heat fan, I'm fine with it because if it means that he's going to come back at 100% when playoff time rolls around, then I'm fine with that. If this were a team that was an up-and-coming team or a team that was a playoff contender, then I would be concerned because then it's a case of you're losing a guy that when he is healthy, he puts up points. We, we just talked about it. Game five of the NBA Finals last year. Game seven of the NBA Finals as well. So... We know what Dwayne Wade is going to do when playoff time rolls around. So if he has to sit out that long, I'm fine with it. Uh, Brandon, your thoughts, same questions. Uh, first off, again, all three of you, spot on. But uh, coming from the actual all-star point of view, I don't think Dwayne Wade cares. I don't see why he would want to play in this event. 
But that drop foot just sounds bad. Um, again, that goes back to my point. Why would he even want to play? And uh, Andy, good point about Eric Bloodsoul. And I don't know if it really relates too much, but I, I agree with you that Bloodsoul should take notes on what Dwayne Wade's doing. And I don't know if it relates again, but uh, Derek Rose, I mean, Bloodsoul should take notes from Derek Rose, but that's also kind of another topic. Um, I agree because... I feel like the Heat, I mean, they, 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 they'll they say it in the media. They say that they do care about regular season wins, but they don't. <laughs> it's the regular season, and it's really, it all matters what you do in the playoffs. So let Dwayne Wade do what Greg Oden's doing and just sit out, you know, come in when he's ready. And as of Lance Stevenson, uh, first off, Desmond, I loved what you said about Kyle Lowry. Fantastic. He reminds me of the Goran Dragic of the Eastern Conference because, but, at the end of the Villanova. day, it should have been Lance Stevenson. <laughs> it should have been Lance Stevenson. It, it will be Lance Stevenson, I should say. And I think he's only leading it by like four or five, but he's the lead, league leader in triple doubles, and he's a phenomenal player. He's he's Lance Stevenson. I love the guy. So him or Kyle Lowry, if that how helps many, answer the question. How many people would have picked Lance Stevenson at the beginning of the season if they were asked the question of who will have the most triple doubles in the NBA? <laughs> I'm thinking nobody. But I, I agree with uh, to Desmond's point and to Brandon's point. Uh, for me, it could have been Lance Stevenson or Kyle Lowry replacing mm -hmm. uh, Dwayne Wade. I, I almost feel like it could have been those two, either of those two in the first place, over Dwayne Wade and Joe Johnson. Obviously, I've talked too much about that. That's atrocious. Yeah. Um, a couple points I had about Wade. He's uh, he's missed 15 games this season, which is already more than he missed last season. He missed 13 last season, and the season before 2011-12, their first championship season, he missed 33 games. Hmm. Look, the Miami Heat. The only thing they need to avoid is being the eight seed and playing the yeah. Indiana Pacers in the first round. That's all. They hmm. can be the seven seed and play whoever in the first round. Not have home court advantage. They'll probably steal it anyways. They're not at risk of losing to any teams in the East except for perhaps the Pacers. Save Dwayne Wade, get the guy healthy. Best of wishes to Dwayne Wade, who's already on the wrong side of 30 and has every problem in the world. You know, your foot should not just be going numb. Exactly. Like that, that would be a problem for me. If my foot was just yeah. not working and being numb, I, I, I would probably freak out. But, I don't uh, mean to cut you off. No, Andy, go ahead. But in the Eastern Conference, I think worst case scenario is the Heat would have to worry about fifth. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's some talented teams in the East, but really? <laughs> LeBron James and Chris Bosh can beat probably most of those teams with outweighed for exactly. the yeah. and, I, and I think LeBron kind of made a statement with his game against the Warriors uh, the other mm -hmm. night. I mean, the game winner and, and before that against the Suns. I mean, two Western teams from a talented Western conference that are deep, they have depth, mm -hmm. and they've, they've been like red hot. He's like, listen, you get healthy. I'm here for one thing, and I'm here to win rings. I'm here to chase history. I can do this regular season stuff. I did it in Cleveland. I have a better yep. cast here. Yep. You Yo, that, that, that step back three against Iguodala was nasty. Desmond, <laughs> I actually, I actually watched that Suns game, the whole thing, and whew, wow, yeah. the fourth quarter because he he only scored six points in right. the first quarter, and then all of a sudden, fourth quarter. He went warrior style. It was crazy. All right, let's jump into these last two topics. This next one is is more funny than anything, but it, it's uh, this one is uh, serves as a reminder to us all about staying humble. You got to stay humble, guys, in life, in sports, <laughs> in whatever. Be humble. Roy Hibbert, the big fella for the Indiana Pacers, he claims that back in two thousand and one. He and his friends, they, they had the foam fingers for the rock and everything, and they went to a WWE event. While he was chilling with his friends, he saw Kwame Brown, who was just drafted number one by the uh, Washington Wizards. Kwame was 19, Hibbard was 14. Roy Hibbard, being a basketball player himself, and a big fella, I can't even imagine how big Roy Hibbard was at 14, but let's just say he was probably pushing <laughs> seven foot already. <laughs> He approaches uh, Kwame, the new star, and Kwame, as Desmond put it so elegantly before the show, Kwame was kind of feeling himself a little bit too much, drinking his own Kool-Aid, and he snubbed Roy Hibbert, essentially. He looked him up and down, didn't give a shit about him. But uh, let's get our thoughts on that. We'll go to you first, Damon. 
Well, um, it's funny now because Roy Hibbert's an all-star and Kwame Brown is even in the league at this point. Um, back in, you know, like you guys said, you have to be humble in these type of situations. Kwame Brown at that point, yes, he was um, getting ready to be the number one overall pick. At that point, he was already. Um, the fact remains is you, you had earned nothing at that point. So uh, a guy like Roy Hibbert comes to you and, and you know, you, you're supposed to give, you're supposed to show him, you know, you know, show him some hospitality because at the end of the day, this guy could be beating me at, at, at my very game, you know, years from now, which he's pretty much doing. Um, so my whole thing is this, always be humble no matter what, what position you are um, because we just talked about it just a little while ago. The best player and probably you know, the, one of the more humble players in all sports is getting ready to retire in, in, in December. I'm sorry, September and Derek Jeter. And whether you like it or not, you're a Red Sox fan, you got to respect the brother because he was humble and he put out, uh, he put out his all night in and night out as well. So for Kwame Brown, the, the, the lesson to you is, well, you already learned your lesson. Um, but the lesson here is really to all the young players, you know, who are in middle school and high school, you know, keep, stay humble no matter what, you know, because at the end of the day, you ain't guaranteed to make the NBA. Um, so you know, that's really all I have to say on that one. Desmond, your thoughts on Kwame snubbing Roy Hibbert? I mean, there's that saying, karma is a, I'm not going to finish it, but uh, it's just, that's just what it is. I mean, and you hit it right on the head, uh, Damon, you talk about being humble. That wasn't in the age of what we have now in Twitter and stuff like that. So imagine that happening then, and they did have Twitter. Roy Hibbert could easily tweet, just got snubbed by Kwame Brown, and people would have this perception of him. But now that it's coming out now, it's it's actually even worse because Roy Hibbert, like you said, he is an all-star. He is a big man who, when his contract is up, probably going to command a lot of money just for being a big body and having talent. You know, this is a guy that very well, very may well be the anchor into dethroning the heat in the playoffs if all goes their way. And Kwame Brown was supposed to be that big man. He was supposed to be the second coming of Shaq. He was supposed to be the next big thing, and he's not. And uh, it just shows humbleness. And you, you just talked about a guy who just reeks of humble, Derek Jeter. One of the great things about Derek Jeter that a lot of organizations have talked to him, not even just the Yankees, just everyone who knows him, the way he treated rookies. The way he treated rookies and children and kids who looked up to him was beyond what any other athlete could do, and it, and it proved to be a great thing for him because no one is speaking ill will of Derek Jeter. No one is speaking ill will of Michael Jordan, who, despite being arrogant at times, he treated rookies with respect. He may have given them a nudge here or there, but he said, hey, listen, I'm a mentor to you. I'm going to show you how to do things right. You see, he took Carmelo Anthony under his wing when he came into the league. The, the likes of Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant went up to Michael Jordan and said, I could beat you one-on-one. -on -one. And Michael Jordan was like, hey, if you think you could, that's fine. He didn't chastise him. He didn't snub him. He took him under his wing. So I think being humble is very key in sports. Brandon, your thoughts? Yeah, first off, uh, you guys stole the words right out of my mouth. Um, I'm going to go another direction if this relates to it. Uh, I've been doing that the whole show, but whatever. Um, this just brings up the topic of NBA draft busts. Kwame Brown, I mean, it's funny, Damon, I actually looked up uh, if Kwame Brown was playing in the league, and you're right, he's not. I don't think he even played many games last year with the 76ers, but that's just my point, really. Like, Especially with this 2014 anticipated draft class, I mean, these kids need to take a look at this small situation, and they need to just take a look at some of the NBA draft busts in the past and see how good they were coming out of college and look at themselves and – humble down, and know that they have to uh, to train and learn. And also, one more thing, too. I'm not the biggest college basketball fan, so I could be eating my own words, but I I just wish college players would at least stay two years. I wish that was the rule. Two years, because then they have the option to be like, okay, I'm going to stay and learn from these phenomenal college coaches. And, yeah. My my re really my only point because you guys have done a, a fantastic job of kind of summing this whole thing up is I, I think this is probably the only thing that nobody really mentioned. 
why is a 19 year old adult man just <laughs> drafted to to play in one of the you know have one of the greatest careers you could possibly have being an NBA you know potential star? Why are you treating a 14 year old kid like a piece of garbage? Like I, I that was the thing I didn't understand. I guess uh, you know maybe it's me being a father. I don't know why you would treat a kid, especially a kid. Well, I'm sure Roy Hibbard, you know, being a big kid at that age, didn't just walk up to him and you know not mention the fact that he plays basketball and enjoys basketball. I feel like Kwame Brown did everybody a disservice by you know. Well, I don't under. I mean, you should have signed an, even if he didn't sign an autograph. He should have said, you know, hey, little man, you know. Keep playing ball. You, words of encouragement. It just takes the words right. out of my mouth mm-hmm. that he that he snubbed a kid. <laughs> can I, can it I, wasn't I, like he was, for a, he wasn't an adult. It wasn't an eighteen year old coming up being a fanboy. I mean, this was a fourteen mm-hmm. year old kid. Damon, go ahead. Um, you made a great point. You know, the whole, whole you know, just by saying you know, keep it up, kid, or give him an autograph. You know, kids yeah. are gonna remember a something. Pat on like the that back because. Because anything, you know, a free smoothie or something, I get some free popcorn. I don't want anything. He would remember that. Um, but the thing about it is, is you also got to think about this too. Uh, uh, the uh, legendary coach Bill Walsh once said, "We don't believe in hazing the rookies and whatnot." You guys brought up the the whole hazing thing because at the end of the day, you're gonna need those rookies if an injury occurs. So what if it's a situation where you know Roy here? and Kwame Brown happened to be on the same team. And based on the potential of those two, that would have been a deadly combination. Let me say that. One, uh, you don't think Roy Hibbert's going to remember that, and you don't think that could possibly ruin the the, the, the locker room uh, because you feel like, well, this guy is just a complete arrogant you know, a-hole. So I don't want to work with this guy, and that's when things go wrong. So like, like you said, you know, you know, you gotta you gotta treat people right, no matter where you where you are at this point in your life. You know, you gotta treat them right. Otherwise, you, you know, who's to say this could have been karma for Kwame Brown? You know, yep. especially this, young impressionable kids. Kids, man, they're important. This is America. Treat the kids right. right. Let's before we eat up too much more time. Let's get into this last subject real fast. Um, and this is Jim Beheim, Carmelo Anthony's former coach at Syracuse University. Uh, if you remember, Carmelo won a championship there before coming into the NBA in 2003. Beheim, who's often uh, – he kind of reminds me in a lot of ways of a Greg Popovich when they try to interview him. He's a funny guy. He doesn't really like to talk too much. But he said that uh, Carmelo Anthony should go – I mean, it was kind of vague, but Carmelo Anthony should go and play where he can win. Um <sighs> I guess we don't really need thoughts on Beheim's comments because I feel like everybody believes Carmelo Anthony at this point in his career should be playing where he can win. Where do you guys all think – this is kind of a curveball because I didn't really mention it before I like my curveballs. Where do you guys think that should be, whether it's him staying in New York or going somewhere else? And let's consider, uh, if you're talking about him being traded somewhere, pieces he would potentially be traded for. Where do you think Carmelo should land? Where is the place Carmelo can win? Brandon, we'll start with you. I'm actually kind of glad you asked me first. Um, just in my opinion and the way that I view NBA basketball, um, I don't think New York's doing the right things right now, despite if they make the playoffs for the next five years or if they don't even make it this year. I don't think they're doing the right things right now. Um, they've attempted to build the right pieces around Melo, and it just hasn't worked. It kind of reminds me of the last few years in Denver – because we all remember when Allen Iverson and Melo teamed up. That was interesting, but it didn't work. For some reason, Chicago has always attracted me for Melo to go there. I mean, that's been rumored before and it's been talked about, but I would say Chicago. I, I think Chicago is a good place. Uh, Tom Thibodeau uh, preaches defense, and I feel like they're slowly but surely making the right moves there in Chicago. Okay, so Desmond, how about you? Where do you think that Carmelo Anthony could potentially land to win games, win a championship, be a fixture in the playoffs? I think, uh, and I'm glad this is a gr- another great question. Um, Carmelo Anthony, I think we've all agree, is not going to win a championship in New York mm-hmm. anytime soon. It just, yep. not only on the court is it bad, but in the front office, it is atrocious. Uh, yeah. With that said, I think the Knicks need to be smart here. I think they need to look at themselves in the mirror, Dolan especially, and say, listen, I need to trade this guy. I need to get something in return because 
all signs are pointing to he's not coming back if he has a chance to opt out, which he does. So he's not coming back. Um, with that said, I was mulling it over, but I read this great article on Bleach Report, um, and I don't usually do shout-outs, but I have to give one to Dan Favale. Uh, he's a future columnist, and he, he has a trade that makes sense, and that's to the Golden State Warriors. Um, hmm. They're a dark horse team for him. They, they have the assets to trade, and you pair shooter. Listen, like Brandon mentioned before, uh, one of you mentioned before, I apologize, they, oh no, it was Damon. They live by that jump shot. They live by it or they die by it. So why not live by it or die by it with Carmelo on your roster going with Steph Curry? And if they were the to make Warriors that, are doing a lot of good things over there too. Sorry to interrupt. They, I mean, you could maybe get a trade going where you have uh, this is the proposed trade. You maybe put in a David Lee, you put in a Clay Thompson, mm -hmm. you put in a Draymond Green, and you, and in return you get a Carmelo Anthony and a Numan Shumpert. They've been putting Shumpert's name out there. For as long as we can remember, they tried to get Fareed for him, uh, and Denver wasn't biting. So I think you could. I think Golden State is a good landing place for Carmelo. I think Mark Jackson would do wonders for him as a coach. He hasn't had a coach uh, not you know taking anything away from Mike Woodson. I believe Mike Woodson is a good motivator, uh, but I think it's time for a change. I think you need to trade him. I think you need to get what you can get for him, mm -hmm. and it's that simple. Either you trade him and get something in return, or you let him leave and get nothing. Uh, I was going to say Chicago because really the, the two I've heard the most about recently is it seems like Chicago or L.A., L.A. Clippers, let me clarify. Um, and I never liked the Clippers thing because it seems like they would have had to give, it a, uh, give up Blake Griffin, which doesn't They're make not sense do to that. me. Yeah, Blake Griffin's playing way too yeah. well this year. I, he's turned the corner. It's hard to find good power forwards. Desmond, I've got to say, man, that I haven't heard anything about Golden State, but you just kind of completely sold me on Golden State. I really like that mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. Uh, especially if they can keep an Andre Iguodala right. with Carmelo Anthony, uh, with Steph Curry, with Andrew Bogut. You, the guys you spoke of, and I'll just stick to that, would be like a David Lee, Clay Thompson, maybe both of them. Although I don't know if the Knicks are interested in David Lee coming back to New York, but at this point, I think the Knicks don't really have the leverage, and you kind of alluded to that. Because uh, Carmelo, he's, he's, I don't think he's staying. He's gone. He's gone. Their, their cap uh, is, is awful. Amari Stoudemire is basically a, an unmovable contract. Tyson Chandler's kind of got a bad deal for what it's worth at this point. I just, I, I feel like they're in a situation where they really had to be able to win last year or this year, and it didn't happen, so it's not going to happen. That Golden State thing is intriguing. You know, I thought about a team, another team I thought about that doesn't probably really have the assets to acquire Carmelo Anthony unless uh, Dolan decides to do them a favor, a place where I can see Carmelo Anthony having a, a good time would be the Memphis Grizzlies. I don't know who they can really give up to get Carmelo Anthony, but I think that they lack a scorer on the wing like that. And no can take over games, let's face it. But uh, anybody have any thoughts? I, I really like the Golden State thing. Brandon or Damon, do you guys have anything to really chime in about that? I mean, let me let me just say this. I, I grew up watching the Knicks. I'm not even from New York, but I grew up watching the Knicks. In fact, I could have put Allen Houston on my Mount Rushmore. That's how big of a fan nice. I was back then of the Knicks. But it is bad to see these two teams be so bad, Brooklyn and New York, because Brooklyn is screwed for, like, the next few years because they picked up the Joe Johnson contract, and then you've got the other contracts as well. Here's the thing with our – he needs to be on a team where he's not the leader. He's not the leader. That means you already have an established leader there, and he's going to be a follower, and he's going to follow in with the rest of the group. So with that being said, you, Brandon and Andy, you guys made a great point. Chicago was the first place that I would, that I would uh, put him. The next team that I would put him in is a Texas team. I'm going to go with the Mavericks. They, I, you have a leader in Dirk. I don't know if he's a guy that would say, look, chill out. You know, you need to, you need to fall in line or you need to go somewhere else. I think Dirk could be that kind of guy and let him know what's up. Um, because, quite frankly, in the Western Conference, you got to score. You got to score. Mm -hmm. Monte Ellis and Dirk Nowitzki, they're not going to get it. They, those two can't be the only ones that are going to get it going for, for Dallas because it seems like when I watch their highlights, those two are the only ones that are putting up the, that are putting up the wins. Um, no disrespect to the other guys, but those two teams, Dallas and Chicago, are, are the teams that I really believe would be the best fit. I do like that Golden State pick. Uh, Desmond, because I do think that, like, once again, you got to score. 
in order to compete in the Western Conference. And I think him and Steph Curry would definitely be a, a – they that would be a more deadly combination than the Splash Brothers that, that are playing currently right now. I'll, I'll just say – and on that one. But I like that too because if it is a Clay Thompson thing, the Knicks – I think the Knicks would bite on that because he's a young asset. Right. Uh, we don't really know where his ceiling is yet. So that's a good one. Um, I think, you know, we, we've done about all we could for the day. I think it's about time to wrap it up. I want to thank Brandon, Damon, and Desmond for joining me today. Hopefully we'll get with you guys again next week. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you head on over to www.sports-kings.com. Check out our articles. You can find everybody's work over there from myself to these three on the panel. You can also hit us up on Facebook at sports-kings. Interact with us. Uh, I want to start up a mailbag thing for for this uh, King's Court show, and we can answer some of you fans' questions out there uh, on a weekly basis. Until next time, enjoy the All-Star game. We'll see you next week.